If you guys like the content, just make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on. It helps out a lot and it gets my uh, channel out there a little bit more. Thanks for watching, guys. Okay, so before I get started, I'm just going to go over a little bit of uh, fundamentals when it comes to rendering and how to light volumes and objects. So you see right here, we have a just like a regular sphere. Um, in order to render this sphere out, which this will pretty much carry across any object that you're going to be rendering out, um, we're going to break it up into like the different types of lighting and shadow that are going to occur on the surface. So right here, I wrote down some notes and labeled everything. So we have the light that's coming from this direction. So depending on how reflective the surface is, you'll see a, a specular highlight, which is this little area right here. Um, the more reflective the surface is, the sharper that little highlight's gonna get. And the less reflective it is, the, the more it'll kind of fade out into the half tone. So the half tone is the area in between the highlight and the terminator line. So this is going to start to gradually fall off into a shadow. And right where the light falls off is called the terminator line. So that's going to be where there's no more light wrapping around the form. <clears throat> right behind that. We're going to have a core shadow, which is the darkest part of the object. So the core shadow is the spot on the surface where the light source is not hitting it and no bounce light is hitting it. So right here we have like the bounce light. Let me turn this off so you can see it a little better. We have our bounce light right here and that's normally going to be the surface reflecting up onto the object. This is the direction of the light, which is dictating the cast shadow. So if you just follow it in perspective, you can kind of map out where your shadows are going to end up. And then next we have the occlusion shadow, which is where two surfaces are meeting. Um, so we're going to have an absence of light due to the occlusion caused by two surfaces meeting. So that's just like a quick rundown and a breakdown of um, how to light an object. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is the more reflective the object is, the more bounced light you'll have and the sharper the specular highlight will be. So just keep that in mind when you're rendering out different materials. Okay, and then next we are going to talk about how I render out the materials themselves. So first we start with just like a regular sphere and we want to take it into steps. So step one would be your flat color. So we're gonna establish the flat color and we're gonna add small variations in that flat color. So you see how we have like darks and lights. That's not influenced by the lighting at all. That is just the color variation within the surface itself. This is more, you can kind of layer it on top of each other to create more of a grunge effect. But that's gonna be your first step. Step two would be variations. Sorry, just last sec. So the number three is going to be layering. So if we're, for instance, layering two materials on top of each other, we're going to create that next material. This is not any material specifically. It's just randomly picked colors, but I just layered these on top of each other. And you want to follow the same steps with each layer. So now like, to say this is like a metal, a painted metal, and then we're adding layers of paint on top of it. You're going to follow the same steps. So you want to establish your flat colors, establish variations in the color. You can continue to layer like grungy and 
dirty textures on top of each layer to like make it more believable. And then we're going to go into start establishing our lighting. So we have our lighting similar to the gray sphere that we rendered out earlier. We're just establishing the core shadows, the half tones, and then we can come in here and add our highlight areas. And if we want to, we can add like some more specular highlights as well. Um, so that's basically the, uh, the rundown of how I build materials up. It's going to be the same process for every single material. So I study the material. I look at the picture. I notice the different variations in hues and the variations in textures. So like some areas will be more textured than others. Um, some spots will be smoother. So I just try to make note of that. And then I start by building up layers. So normally I start with like the base layer. So say we're doing like a rock or something and start with your rock. We'll build up like dirt or moss or snow on top of that. Or like I show in the demo, we do like a rusted metal. So bottom layer would be the, the metal and starting to rust. And then on top of that, we add a layer of paint. And on each layer, we're just adding color variations to break up the flatness of the local color and value. And then we can add our lighting on top of that with like levels or hue saturation layers. That way it affects all the surfaces. That's pretty much how I break down doing materials. And hopefully you guys can learn something from that.